My name is Clarissa. Um, I am a former foster youth. I recently graduated and I want to share my story because I want to show anyone who thinks that they can't do it or has ever been told that they can't do it, that they can, especially other foster youth. One night, the day before my birthday, September 3rd, came home and there were cops. And they took my stepdad away. And my mom decided then she was done too. That's when I knew I, I had to get out of here. ¿Quién no se equivoca? Humans make mistakes. Porque recordemos que todos somos humanos. Hello everyone, today we are going to be talking with Clarissa Acuña. Hello. And we have a great story here, but not great because it was easy, great because of the challenges, great because of the struggles, great because this girl right here, she know what perseverance is all about. So if you ever want to learn about perseverance, you need to ch stay tuned to the book that she's going to write about perseverance. <laughs> because let me tell you, I have been hanging out with her, listening to her. And she had me laughing. She is stealing my heart. She had me crying. She had me feeling. She had me remembering about who I was and who I am and who I want to be. And I think she's going to do the same with you. Um, I entered foster youth when I was 16, which is a lot older than most youth. I lost my mom, well, my mom abandoned us when I was 15. We were alone for a whole year, my two sisters and I, one older and one younger. Um, when we first entered foster care, we were in a temporary placement and a shelter and they kept us together for three months and then we got separated and I didn't see my sisters again until a year and a half later. My first placement was this home with a colored lady and she was racist to Mexicans. And she, she actually told me that. I remember one morning I was doing cartwheels and she said I was ADD, tried to get me on medications for doing cartwheels as a 16 year old. Like, that's just what we do. And another time I was in bed a minute after my wake up time. I was supposed to be up at 6.15 and it was 6.16 and I got in trouble. I had to pull out all the weeds in the front yard and the backyard by hand before the school bus came. The school bus came at 7.15 and I still had to get ready for school and I couldn't miss it. She also didn't allow us to go to tutoring. She would always sit me on like the ugly seat, give me the worst food, lock the cabinets, lock the fridge. Um, we had 10 minutes to shower, 15 if we were gonna shave, like ladies. Five minutes to shave, I'm Mexican, I'm hairy, I need longer than that. <laughs> and. My roommate was Mexican as well. During one of my circle of supports, for those of you who don't know, a circle of support is something that they do in foster care when you're starting a transition and you're getting to the age of aging out. They get people who support you and come up with a goal, a plan to, to how you're gonna age out. Um, so at my circle of support, my roommate and I went to my caseworker with a list of 32 complaints on my first foster home and we ended up getting her shut down. I ended up finding my own placement after that because foster care wasn't doing anything. They said that they were going to keep me at the house until they can find another placement. So I asked around my school, Judson at the time, a lot of foster youth there. I. Um, was asking around which foster home had an open bed and I found one, my second foster home. That foster mom was great. We had a mom and a dad. Um, she really cared about the kids, really did. But she took 10 of us from the ages of 13 to 17, 10 girls. 
in one house. We had an emergency placement one time and the girl came from Laurel Ridge. She first, when she got there, she pooped in our tub. And that was a normal thing that happened. You know, she would poop. She, she ended up being in my room and one night I woke up to the smell of lighter fluid and I saw her pouring lighter fluid on my roommate and I was already all drenched and she had one of those long barbecue lighters and she told me that she was going to kill us. So I called her one of our other sisters there and she told our foster mom and she got sent back to Laurel Ridge that night. I tried to tell my caseworker that I didn't want to be there anymore. It wasn't safe. Um, before she was there I had some girls try to put Ajax in our room. One girl tried cutting my hair. Um, I told him that even though the foster mom is great, I didn't want to be there. I didn't feel safe. And he said that that, that was a great home, that I was going to stay there. And I was so determined to, to get out, to feel safe, that I actually ran away. I ran away for six months and I got caught. Um, when I came back, I went to this shelter called K-Star in Kerrville. And that's when I saw my sister again, my little sister. She was also on the run and turned herself in to be with me. And we were there for three months. It was awesome. Why that did it all start? Why, why did you enter? guys end up in foster home? Um, when, oh God. This September, it was in September 3rd, 2008, the day before my 15th birthday. Me and my older sister went to go see my real dad and my grandma, to, you know, to celebrate my birthday. And when I came home, I saw three, four cops outside our house. It was already night. Honestly, it was like around nine o'clock. So the lights were so bright, so bright. And I just see my little sister there on the front porch with her boyfriend at the time crying, just sobbing. And I was like, what's wrong? What happened? Like, what happened? And she was just like, he tried to kill her. He tried to kill mom. I was like, what? And I look in the cop car and my stepdad's in the back. And went and grabbed my mom out of the bathroom by her hair and put her on the bed in the living room and was just choking her. My sister's boyfriend at the time, who was super short and skinny, tackled him. And my stepdad's a big guy. And my stepdad turned on him, started punching him until he snapped out of it, then went to the neighbors and called the cops and said that he tried to kill his wife. So they came, and after they had left, my grandma and my real dad left, and my mom left her Sancho or her second boyfriend at the time came, Roger. So tell me, what was your relationship mostly like with your mom before all of this? <laughs> I loved my mom. I loved her. My mom would say, Midgey, go do the dishes. And I said, yes, ma'am. My mom said, Midgey, can you massage my feet? And I said, sure. <laughs> we had a lot of good times. We had girls' days where we would do avocado masks. She would make us surprise breakfasts. My mom said we were her angels, that we were her life. And I felt like she loved us. I was super close to my mom. I shared everything with my mom. I still, you know, slept in bed with my mom till the day she left. And that's what hurt the most because it was like, like how can you love something so much and then just leave them? And my thing was, is if she didn't want to be a mom, she should have given us up before. But getting to know her and getting to have memories and having her tell her she loves us, just for her to leave, that hurt. That hurt the most. But before then, we were always close. Even when we didn't have light, she tried to make fun, like everything fun. We grew up without light a lot. 
without electricity, without water, without a roof over our head, but she always made it fun. She never ever let us know that we were struggling. I never thought we were struggling as bad as I know we were now. When I was going through it, it seemed like it was normal. When we had to sleep outside, we were camping. When we didn't have light, we used to do everything by candlelight, like in the olden days, and that's what she used to make it feel like. We played cards a lot, so much cards. We were really close, the three of us. My older sister was with my dad, mostly. It's me, my little sister, and my mom, all the time. And and mom, you know, I really, really tried to do everything perfect. I tried to be perfect. So why did you leave? Why couldn't you come back? Why couldn't you fight for your angels? For me. You used to call me your mini-me, but you left. Why? How I was going to be the one with the house out of me and my sisters. I was going to be the rich one, she said. I was like, then why not stay? And why not be there with me? That's what I thought. Before we were close, and I loved her. She was tough and had the weirdest rules. <laughs> we weren't allowed to wear makeup, but we could smoke weed. <laughs> we weren't allowed to have a boyfriend, but we can drink whenever we wanted. Just crazy. <laughs> All my friends thought she was like the coolest mom. Because she was, she was more of a friend, not a mom. She always, always used to take us out of school early just because she didn't want to be alone or she wanted to go to McDonald's or we just wouldn't even go to school. I used to tell my mom to let me go to school, <laughs> which was always weird being the kid that says I want to go to school. And she used to make fun of me for it, but I don't know. I always felt comfortable with her. She was the only person who could ever make me calm down when I had anxiety or when I was overwhelmed from everything that I had committed to, like extracurriculars and stuff. I was always doing way too much. <laughs> and it would get hard and overwhelming and I would break down really, really bad. And she just knew how to calm me down so fast. The stigma that comes with being a foster youth is really tough. Um, most people automatically think that you're troubled, that you have issues, that... Really? You don't have issues? I mean, we all have issues. <laughs> oh, but more issues than... Than normal. Than normal, yes. And I'm not saying that, you know, I feel like I have more issues than normal because I do feel like everyone has a lot of issues. Everyone's going through something and that's what I want to let foster youth know is that just because people make us feel like we have a lot of issues doesn't mean that we do. We're just like everybody else. We have just as many issues as everyone else. That's right. I've met so many people who were not in foster care and are dealing with... They have worse um, issues than you. <laughs> yeah, they're dealing with a lot more, you know, mental battles than I've dealt with. And I'm like, you know, yeah. see, I'm normal. <laughs> Just because I was in foster care doesn't make me not normal. Is this such thing as normal? No. No. I think in this world you need a little bit of crazy to be able to overcome all the challenges and you definitely have that. Yeah. So um, don't worry about being normal. You don't worry about being normal. It's not about being normal. It's about perseverance, something that God is a has. So let's hear about um, Foster you, you, you said that there was um, a center or something that helped you with, with your transition from you know being a foster you help. Tell us about that. Yes, so there is a center that, um, there's 
lots of organizations that reach out to youth that are in the transition stage. They start reaching out around 16. For me, that was when I entered foster care. But they usually try to start working with foster youth when they're 16 to start getting them ready to enter the world. Um, they help with filling out financial aid. They help with applying to college. They helped with my resume. They have classes that you can go for a weekend and learn to budget, learn to interview, learn to shop for an interview. And that's great, but there's a lot more that foster youth need than just those classes. Do you want to expand your job skills and expertise? Are you looking for an opportunity to move up in your career? Is there a convenient online certification to help you achieve these goals? The answer to these questions all start at MITIO.org. MITIO. MITIO is the Medical Interpreting and Translating Institute Online. Inquire online, enroll online, and complete your certification online. For more information, visit MITIO.org, like us on Facebook, or contact us via phone. But the organization helped me so much. There was How did they help you personally? Personally, they were that person that I can go to when I had a question. Most people go to their parents when they don't know how to do something, when they don't know how to fill out paperwork, when they don't know if they're going to the right college, if, when they don't know what they even want to do in life. I didn't know that, and this organization helped me. I had a, a case manager, and he is a beloved friend of mine now. Um, he, he helped me figure out what I wanted to do. He, I originally went for civil engineering and was on academic probation twice. <laughs> and he was like, okay, maybe this isn't your thing, you know? You like numbers, you like math, why not accounting? And that's what I'm in now. Oh, that's awesome. You know, that, that little, the little bit of like, the, this, is, this is where you should go. When I was doing, in the beginning of my college career, I was at St. Phillips. And I was on the 2 plus 2 program. And you only need a certain amount of hours to transfer. And he was just like a dad, like, you already have the amount of hours. Just go to A&M, just go to A&M. And that, you know, and, and the, not just my case manager, there's other, there was other people there that were just so supportive. They have Thanksgiving dinners, they have Christmas dinners, Halloween dinners. That's where I got my prom dress for military ball, actually. Um, they have that for foster youth around you know, prom season where you get to go and pick out an outfit. And it's just fun, you know, it's, it's, it's being able to have a family without a family. And that's something that they try to do a lot. They even just have like movie nights and stuff. I still get invited to stuff like that. And I'm really thankful for them because Every time I have problems with my financial aid, with paperwork because I had to prove that I'm independent or, you know, just most people don't know how to deal with foster youth and the paperwork that comes with us. And they helped out a lot. They helped get me what I needed. They also helped financially because a lot of foster youth don't know this, but you get benefits. You have benefits. and their benefits that can help take you a very long way. And this is the place to go to get that benefits. And they make sure that you know all your benefits. Every resource that they that is out there for you, they're so there are they're resources that way. to help them out. Yes. There yes. are resources out there. But not all of them are informed of the, about all these resources. No. I've I've heard that majority of the foster youth don't even know the benefits that we get. They just leave care, take the thousand dollars, and that's it. They don't know about college being paid for, you know? They don't know that they have- They believe that they have no options. No options. So, well. They're like, how am I gonna go to school? I can't afford school, I have to work. I can barely even afford my apartment, you know? I can't get, I don't have a ride. And that's the thing, like, this place even helps you with bus passes well. to get to school because, I mean, 
we don't even have a house. How are we gonna have a car, you know? <laughs> like, they help with that. They help you find apartments. They help you find a job. They help you with the clothes. They help you with, with everything. Mm -hmm. Everything and anything that they can, they will. So what makes you, I mean, right now we are at what? What, this, what is the school name? Texas A&M, San Antonio. So what made you finish here? Or like, what was driving you? At first, it was that I wanted to better my life. Hmm. I knew that the only way I could never live the way I was living was to get an education and get a good job and know that I was gonna have a stable home, that I was always gonna have food, that I'd be able to survive. Mm -hmm. Because granted, I don't wanna be rich, but you need money to survive. And I knew that I can only do that with an education. And that's what pushed me through so much. But towards the end, towards the end, I was like, well, I got a job, you know? I'm doing well have a place and it was just the fact that I knew that I had to finish I had to finish because I had to not be another statistic mm -hmm. I had to break what everyone thought and I had to show people that they can break it too yeah. that just because we're foster youth doesn't mean we're gonna end up like our parents doesn't mean we're gonna end up another statistic out on the streets or in jail. We can do this, and we have the power to do this. Talk to the youth that are listening to you right now. Tell them what you've been through, and tell them what you did to get to where you are right now, what drove you, so talk to them directly. Foster youth, we've been through hell and back. Foster care was tough. And because of it, you're tough. And it made me tough. And we didn't deserve what we went through. It wasn't your choice to be put and moved from home to home, group home to group home, school to school. Whether your time was short like mine or long like others, everything that you went through made you strong. And I continued my education because I knew that I wanted a better life, that I deserved a better life, just like every single one of you. You are worth more. You deserve more. And we have the resources. It's tough and it's gonna be hard. Did I wanna quit? Did I wanna stop? Oh my God, yes. Were all those sleepless nights hard? Yes. Was it tough? Yes. <coughs> but I can promise that it's worth it. It's, you've gone through tougher we've gone through tougher and this is the step that we all need to take to better our lives and we can we have the resources to do it and why not use them why not better your life you deserve it and i know that i know that it's going to get hard and there's gonna be times where you're gonna to wanna to quit. And there's not gonna be anyone forcing you. No one saying, hey, go to school. Hey, you can do it, you know? Like, you got this. I'm here to tell you you got this. I'm here to tell you you can do it. I'm here to tell you that you're stronger than what you think you are just because of what you've been through. If someone says, ah, oh, you're just another foster youth, tell them, yes, I am a foster youth. And watch what I'm gonna do. Watch where I'm gonna be, how I'm gonna succeed. Because life has made you tougher. And, and because of that, you don't need someone right there by your side saying, yeah, you got it, you got it. You're your own cheerleader. You've always been through life. You've got yourself as far as you are now, and you can take yourself further. With the help and the resources that we have, you can make it as far as you wanna go. We can grow that 3%, that less than 3% that graduate college, 
we can grow that because you're worth it because you deserve more because it's not fair what we went through no it's not fair and it sucks and it's hard but that's okay life is always hard it's always hard just in different ways and now you can go forward and be like what do you got for me now life that's right because that's what i thought i said i've gone through all of this so what do you got for me now mm -hmm. i know you can do it because you've already been through so much there's what else is there left for you to go through other than getting your degree whether that's an associate's or a bachelor's further your education you deserve it you deserve a better life you deserve to have a home you deserve to show your kids that you love them and that they can go to school and show them everything that your parents didn't show you you don't have to be like your parents you end that cycle end the cycle it ends with you and it starts with you and we got this we are stronger shoot we are foster youth that's how strong we are Even though my family wasn't always whole, I'm thankful for my sisters. Even though we didn't always live together. Angel, Desi, Desiree, I love y'all. You know, I never had my mom and my dad together. But thank you God for putting people who love me in my life, like my sisters like my stepdad. I didn't know anything other than the West Side before him. He took me and my sisters to the North Side and showed me that there was more. He showed me what I could have. God, thank you. Thank you for making me strong enough for everything that I've gone through. I know I haven't made it yet, but I know I will. And thank you for getting me this far. I'm grateful for where I am. And I look forward to where you're going to take me. Thank you for everyone that you've put in my life to help me. Like Juani Infante, Ivan Infante, Chris Lopez, Norma. They have helped so much, so much. Sandra, thank you. Because I know I can do more. And I want to do more. But no, I can make it. I can do it. And I can be successful. Through you, all things are possible. Thank you.